All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be giving my speculation on the potential Space Race 2.0 that we could experience possibly in the 2030s or the 2040s and why it might be good for humanity. A lot of people tend to think we shouldn't be wasting money on going to Mars, going back to the moon, but we can actually create a much more livable Earth if we're able to create different technologies and utilize space and especially the energy from the sun to our advantage. The first thing I did want to mention, we had India on the moon. The first probe to land near the lunar south pole that happened yesterday. So India getting into the mix a little bit, that's a big accomplishment for their space program that drew national headlines. But let's talk about Mars. And the idea of sending a human mission to Mars, getting a human being to step foot and walk on the red planet. Is it going to be the United States? Is it going to be China? Could it possibly be India? Is there going to be some type of competition? Could this be a good thing? Could it possibly prevent World War III because we'll be distracted by this potential competitive battle between the two big superpowers, I would not really foresee any other country, I'll be honest, outside right now, in terms of capacity, in terms of what they're spending on space, outside of the United States or China, when it comes to setting foot on Mars, they might try and do a flyby I don't think that's necessary. I think we should just go for it, but let's actually do some research into Mars. When could it potentially happen? If you take a look at the graph right here, the minimum distance between the orbits of Mars and the Earth from 2014 to 2061. So you can see the best time to go originally was 2018. We were really not focused on it at all. There's been a few more conversations about possibly sending uh, you know, people to Mars. You can see the next time possibly 2033, 2035. The idea is if you maximize the window and you maximize the minimal distance between Earth and Mars in terms of the orbits, the right time, the right window would be in between 2033 and 2035. Now, one of the big hurdles with Mars is the radiation, health threat from cosmic rays and other ionizing radiation. In May of 2013, NASA scientists reported that a possible mission to Mars may involve a great radiation risk based on particle radiation measured by the RAD on the Mars Science Laboratory while traveling from Earth to Mars from 2011 to 2012. And there have been a bunch of different rovers that have been sent up to Mars of course, to track the lay of the land. How will NASA go to Mars? In 2022, NASA unveiled a rough outline for its crewed Mars mission, identifying 50 points falling under four overarching categories of exploration, including transportation and habitation, moon and Mars infrastructure, operations, and science. These objectives will inform our exploration plans at the moon and Mars, for the next 20 years, NASA should send $17 billion human mission to Mars in 2033, according to experts. And, and that's just based off of the idea it would be the shortest trip based on the orbit. $17 billion apparently is the price tag. Mars will reach the closest point will be June 27th, 2033. It's a moment that happens every 26 years as Earth undertakes Mars on the inside as both planets orbit the sun. The Earth will be positioned directly between Mars and the sun and Mars will thus be at its biggest and brightest in the Earth's night sky. Mars at this position gives us the best time to send a spacecraft because it dramatically shortens the journey. There is a detailed plan on the table for a low-risk mission possible in 2033 that would last just 570 days. Most crewed Mars missions would take 800 to 1,000 days to complete. Apparently, the plan also involves a flyby of Venus too. And yes, Venus, if you just go into its atmosphere, it does have very Earth-like clouds. You know, they're talking about building some type of cloud castle or cloud base 
in the clouds of Venus because of how livable it is. Boeing has come to the table and offered a potential timeline saying, quote, 2033 is the time to go if you want a really lightweight small mission. And on top of that, we've been looking at a flyby as a good first step there because it further... See, I don't, I don't know about a flyby. Does a flyby really get it done? Guys, you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about the United States versus the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union accomplishing all those different things, you know, compared to the United States. But who won the space race? The United States, because we got someone walking on the moon. And that's what's going to determine this. And, you know, people say, oh, it's a waste of money. It's useless. When in reality, no, if we use different technology to our advantage when it comes to space and the sun and harnessing the energy from it, it's not a waste, and also maybe it keeps us out of a massive world war with China, and we harness it, and we focus on getting to Mars before them. I don't know where the Chinese stand in all this. I do know when you look at the amount of money that's being invested into space programs, it's like pretty much everything else. It's the United States, it's China, and then there's no one else. And by that, I'm dead serious. And I know people are going to say, well, China's economy sucks. You know, they're doing bad right now. They're in deflation. But in reality, it's really not going to put a dent into it. China is still going to be the second most powerful country. They're going to have the second biggest presence when it comes to possible space travel. They're just investing way too much money. There was the idea also that Russia and China might team up and put a base onto the moon. Now, apparently that's not happening, but that came about with full renderings a few years ago that they might do that, and that would be a big issue. The last thing we need is both of those countries coming together into some type of alliance or agreement that could also potentially be used as a military agreement. So that is the situation, and then we also do have Elon Musk's grand plan. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this. Elon Musk, he hinted at a crewed mission to Mars in 2029, and he also has his Mars 2050 mission with full renderings that we're going to go through. The idea is to send a million people to Mars by 2050, and he plans to build 1,000 Starship rockets over 10 years, send three flights to Mars per day, carry 100 passengers per flight, and it would take roughly nine years to transport 1 million people to Mars. And he wants this done by 2050. And listen, we're, we're a ways away from 2050, but this does seem very far-fetched based on our current capacity. I guess the timeline would be, if you can get people on Mars by 2033 in that little window, that 500-day window, when the orbits align and Earth and Mars are close. I mean, you could do it at any time, but just in terms of the crew not spending too much time there, you know, you, you want to mitigate the trip, that's when you would do it. 2033, maybe 2035, maybe 2037. If you're able to do that, then maybe that can usher in an actual base that gets developed on Mars. But it is kind of weird with Musk saying he wants to send three flights per day I mean, that's a long trip depending on where the Earth and Mars are positioned in terms of their orbits. If they're far away, you're looking at possibly multiple years, but there is the idea of building a base on Mars. People say there's no way by 2050, but if we do want some perspective here, if you take right now and you go 20 years in the past, 2003, we didn't even have an iPhone in 2003. 20 years ago, we did not have an iPhone. Think about how far we've come, and then you just go 20 years in the future. That's not even 2050. It's only 2043. So as the dialogue continues with possibly going up into space, going to Mars, going back to the moon, there's also the idea we go back to the moon, uh, You know, we're probably going to see a massive uptick in terms of technology and investments into space when it comes to this because everything's obviously getting better and better and once our technology gets better and better we'll be able to utilize space and the energy that we can harness from space more the idea is you take the energy from the sun and transport it to earth directly with something orbiting around possibly orbiting around Venus because apparently you can do that with Venus and it would be so much closer to the sun. How do we get something up to orbit around Venus 
we take we get all the energy from the sun because venus gets extremely hot it's so much closer to the sun than we are and then we get that energy back to earth that's going to be a big hurdle for humanity but if we're able to do that we will get unlimited energy for sure because that would just be producing so much but either way guys we will have to see what happens when it comes to mars i think possibly i know musk said maybe 2029 but right now, we're really not hearing much in terms of dialogue when it comes to going to Mars. Will it just be a flyby? Will the United States be tempted to do that? Will China want to get someone on it? If there is a Space Race 2.0, I would imagine the winner will be. It's not a flyby. You need to get people on the planet, walking onto the planet. That's going to determine the winner Winner if there is a space race 2.0 between the United States and China. So guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.